So what could it have been like in the cockpit of that ill-fated Ethiopian MAX 8 jet? We're beginning to get an idea with a news report about the pilot's communications with air traffic controllers. King 5's aviation specialist Glenn Farley joins us with the latest on the investigation. So when something like this, break, break, request back to home, radioed the captain of Ethiopian Flight 302 to air traffic controllers. Those words published in the New York Times as reported by a source who had heard the tapes as the pilot says he wants to return to the airport. The cockpit voice recorder is now in a lab in Paris expected to be read out any time, which will help investigators understand even more about just what went on inside the cockpit. I'm going to level out on uh, 150 heading and then I'll try to recreate how the MCAS would have reacted. Aaron Murphy is a Canadian flight instructor here inside of a 737 simulator. He's trying to give us an idea of how a problem with the MCAS system, which is only used in the 737 MAX, could have been handled in flight. MCAS, which stands for Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, is again suspected of playing a role in the crash of the Ethiopian jet last Sunday. We say suspected since investigators so far have found that the known flight profile and now a piece of physical wreckage are believed similar to what's known from the Indonesian crash of the same jet last October, where the investigation is much further along. MCAS is actually a safety system designed to keep the MAX from pitching up and stalling. But the FAA has said if the MCAS gets bad data from a sensor, the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer could shift up, forcing the nose of the plane down. But pilots, including Captain Murphy, show how it could have been controlled. I'll try to regain control. If it's not happening and the MCAS is still taking over, I come down to the the cutout switches, they go to the off position. I should be able to maintain control if the horizontal stabilizer has gone to a full nose down position. I'm going to know right away because the control column is going to be super heavy. I'm going to roll the control wheel back to the nose up position. This is moving the horizontal stabilizer. Again, all of this assumes that a troubled MCAS system was in play here and there wasn't another cause. But let's talk about what investigators could also hear when listening to the cockpit voice recorder. There will be sounds other than just the pilot's conversations. There are other voices, synthetic voices, such as the enhanced ground proximity warning system that would have also been heard, telling the pilots a collision with the ground is coming if nothing changes. Terrain. Pull up, terrain. Pull up, terrain. Pull up. Now, we are hoping to hear something uh, from the black boxes soon. Again, concern that the flight data recorder chip could be damaged, so investigators may not get as full a picture as they were hoping for on that. Not hearing negative issues about the cockpit voice recorder, which, again, is microphones in the ca cabin. So yesterday, Glenn, you talked about a jack screw being part of the evidence. And right. when we hear that word, we think of that Alaska plane that crashed off the coast of California yeah, decades a while back. ago. Right. Yeah. So just to be clear, Nobody is saying anything that the jack screw is responsible for this crash or that the jack screw is somehow involved in this crash. What the jack screw tells us is the position of a flight control service which surface, which is a horizontal stabilizer, being in that upward position. So people have been sort of saying, okay, so the jack screw failed here. No, never said that. It's just an indicator that may tell us more about what happened in this case. All right, Glenn, thank you for that update.